My name is John Sane. I'm a futures strategist who creates keynotes, masterclasses, and books to help people, businesses, and brands forge the future they want. With me is my co-host, Eric Kruger, who is a keynote speaker, executive coach, and author who helps leaders become formidable in the face of uncertainty. On the show, we deep dive into the range of topics, including business, psychology, money, success, spirituality, technology, global news, and a whole bunch more. For our regular listeners, thank you for sharing your time and attention with us again today. Welcome to a brand new episode. Before we begin today's episode, I'd like to ask you to quickly hit the pause button and take 15 seconds to leave us a review on either Apple or Spotify to make sure it's a five-star review. Uh, nothing less than a five star. Eric gets very upset uh, behind the scenes. We're currently at about 120 ratings overall, and our goal is to hit 200. So please help us by leaving it on for us today. This goes a long way in helping us grow our community. Right. With all that out the way, let's begin with today's topic. And first up, let's connect with Eriko. Hello, brother. Good. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. Thank you. I'm very good. It's a very hot day here in Dubai, and uh, I'm sitting in the aircon uh, chatting to you. Looking forward to this episode today. How are you? Nice. Yeah, um, very windy day in Cape Town. I don't know if there are any other types of days here. It kind of seems to me like that is the, the kind of day to have in Cape Town. Um, so yeah, very windy. I uh, just came back from a walk with the pups. Uh, it's, one of the things I love the most is that like just down the road from here, we have this incredible nature reserve or it's part of a nature reserve and we get to walk there every single day with the dogs. They get to swim. They, they love it to death. Like at the moment Jager knows we're going, he starts like, he's like a fidget spinner. He just like spins in circles. He can't wait to just get out and get to the park. Um, yeah. So we just came back from there uh, working on the book launch uh, happening sort of mid April, um, which the more <laughs> I think about it, the, the worse, <laughs> the worse a date that becomes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, it's a terrible um, date. But but you know what? You know what? I've been working on on non judgment hard. I've, I've been, wow! I've been, yeah, yeah. I've been That's trying a to big get... one. That's a big one. That's a big one. It's a it's a huge topic actually because I think we are so quick to say this is a good thing and this is a bad thing, you know. And I think of like um, there's this quote from Walt Whitman that says, um. So I contradict myself, I contain multitudes. And I think of that often, you know, like we, there's so many different versions of us. And there's a version of me that's like healthy and like focused and doing the right kind of thing. And there's a version of me that's going to smash a whole slab of chocolate, you know, and like, and, and in my head, I want to go, yes, good you and bad you. But actually, it's just all part of the same thing. Like, I, I just want to stop being so damn judgmental. And even of when yourself? I think of that date, of myself, specifically okay, myself. Yourself. Yes, yes. Um, okay. Also yeah. other people, I guess. Um, I'm trying to judge you a lot less for the things that you do. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the way we judge ourselves is how we judge others. The more yeah, accepting sure. we are of ourselves, the less we, less we judge others. So, yeah, I think it always starts with that self, friend? right? How do you do on that front? Um, I'm, obviously, it's a big topic for me and, and very much bringing a balance to my personality and becoming mm. okay with, you know, I think my biggest thing is being lazy is I don't know how to be chilled. I don't know how mm. to be relaxed. It's like, and so I've got to always remind myself it's okay to sleep in. It's okay to, it's okay to snooze my alarm clock. And I, that, that's, that's my battle. Mm. I imagine everybody has got their own battle. Some people with food, some people with intimate relationship, whatever. I mean, for me, it's about being lazy and being, being, being ambitious, but also balancing that, that yeah. out, you know? So, yeah, I think it's a big topic. I think it's a topic that um, we continuously battle with, but I think I'm a lot better, you know? I think it's just mm. about being kind to yourself and being patient with yourself. And, you know, it's an ongoing process, you know? Mm. Yeah, yeah, it's an ongoing process. You have to let go of the, of the judgment of it, you know? Like, even if you have a bad day, for example, like, it's easy to go, that was a bad day. But actually, like in the long term of like run of things, it was just a day, you know, like and like it doesn't really matter. So I think we get so caught up. I know speaking for myself, I get so caught up in like good or bad, uh, the right way or the wrong way. Like, I mean, how often is that like we're looking for that like one way that we're going to build our business? Like, well, it, it doesn't I exist. think as you said it the other day when we we're talking about future skills, you know, everything's in the gray. Yeah, I love that because I also have been using that line, actually, you know, everything's in the gray. It's like it's okay to be in the gray. It's okay to be both. I mean, to be 
both lazy and active. It's okay to be both generous and stingy. It's okay to be both kind and mean. You know what mm. I mean? I, I mm. think I think all of those are available to us. And the more we judge the negatives, the more they pop up for us. You know, so mm. yeah, it's a good topic. I mean, I, mm. I think it's an I think it's a human. So firstly, you get humans that are just totally unconscious to it, and then you get humans that are becoming conscious to it and become like sort of like perfectionists and want to be perfectionists in that scenario and become sort of bubblegum spiritualists, you know? Mm. And then you evolve to a point where you really start to accept yourself on, on all fronts. And I don't, you know, you've got to be really enlightened to be there, but it's an ongoing process. And uh, mm. it's really about evolving from unconscious to semi-conscious to fully conscious. And so I mm. guess we all in that sort of semi-conscious to fully conscious phase and trying yeah. to figure it out. Um yeah, thank you for that sort of quick therapy rant there. Um, how are you doing? What's happening in Dubai? <laughs> you were on oh, stage no. yesterday for uh, for the expo. Tell us. Yes, about uh, it. the Royal Highness uh, Al Maktoum, uh, visionary leader. I'm a big fan of his. Um, he's he's got many initiatives, and one of his initiatives is called the Knowledge Summit. And the Knowledge Summit is about increasing knowledge in the region and uplifting the Arab world and world. And, you know, they've got a lot of things around here to get the Arab world to become more globalized. And mm. um, there's a big drive for it. And so this was very much part of that. The summit It was a two day summit. What an incredible setup and, you know, lots of dignitaries and TV presenters. And it was really beautifully done and put together. My talk was really about the evolvement of knowledge into wisdom. And really starting to understand that in the future, knowledge could be, I would think, more so than not disrupted by technology, AI, data. And uh, what we need to do is evolve into wisdom. And this is obviously something I always write and talk about. So, yeah, it was good. Um, I think the, 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 yeah, thank you. And I, I think the, the, the market here is very much still focused in on PhDs and doctors and degrees, doctorates and degrees. And, and very much in my talk, I was like, look, those things are commoditized. You know, there's many people that are clever in the world. It doesn't guarantee you anything anymore. I think it's more of an ego scenario to say that you have a PhD. It positions you in a higher uh, social status, you know. But other than that, it's not adding any real value to the workplace or any impact that you're bringing because it's just a million of you. And also the world is moving at such a pace, those things become less and less relevant. So I think the, 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 the audience is always a little bit like taken aback because they still very much in that scenario, but then you get places like, you know, the, the East coast or the West coast of America that doesn't give a care about your degree. It's really about how are you operating and how you're executing on your business and your tech startup and those sort of things. So I think every region in the world has its own sort of social status scenarios. I think even in America, it's, it's good to say you don't have a degree, but you become a billionaire in a tech setter, you know? Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's, it's a, it's a, yeah, it's, it's an interesting process to want to bring across, but nevertheless, it was great. And it was great to be at Expo again. And Expo is just so magnificent. I'm sorry that you're missing it, but really a wonderful, wonderful um, effort that the UAE has put in into this Expo. It's really, you know, How long is that hats carrying off. on for? Because it started... Now, end, of, end of March, six months. Oh, okay. October to, October to March. Yeah. Oh, okay. But let's get yeah, going with today's topic. It. Yeah, you are missing it. I know you are. Let's get going um, on today's topic. And it was a topic that yeah. you wanted to bring up. So why don't you kick it off? Yeah. So um, over the weekend, I sent you this message um, that I think we should do a, a podcast episode all about building relationships. And uh, I don't really want to use the word networking because I think in some ways it kind of takes away from the depth that, that, um, that relationships require. However, I think it's in the same vein. It's, it's how do you build relationships that... Uh, in some way accelerate your your professional career but that also brings a certain depth to your personal life and from the outside when I've observed you I think that you are very good at this um, whether it is the calls that we've been on and we are having interactions with people like we've had multiple zoom calls where we've had other like for example a guest on the show or when we were speaking to service providers whatever the case may be um, I've often observed that I think that you are good at connecting to people when we are on those calls and doing it in, in quite a quick way. And then obviously you also have like a, a circle of friends around you in Cape Town that you've um, always mentioned, like your, your family, what, what do you call it? Like your chosen your family, chosen family. Mm -hmm. And then I know that you also then said, you know, now that I'm moving to Dubai, 
I'm looking to also build out my chosen family in Dubai. So like, mm. obviously there's something, uh, some intention that you are putting an effort that you're putting behind a process like that. Mm. So I thought that's something we could speak about. And um, maybe where we could start is just for you to tell us, because you've had a, you've had a history in hospitality. So when I was thinking about this and you're reflecting for myself, I was like, has it always been good at it? Like just one of those people that likes to connect to people or did the hospitality industry train you to become good at, at cultivating relationships? Yeah, I mean, look, firstly, I, I, and, and I'll share what I said in the WhatsApp response to you. And I was like, seriously? Like, you, you want to ask me that question? It's like, in my own head, I've still got so much work to do around relationships. I want to get so much better at relationships. And, but, you know, I also, I suppose I'm critical of my own character and I want to be kinder and add more value all the time. And, and I don't often get around to it. And, and I also ended that conversation with you that as, if, as much effort as I put into relationships, I'm also very, very clear on the boundaries of relationships I don't want to be in. And only on the reflection point that I realized that I have such sort of strong intentions around relationships and also those boundaries. So I think it'll be good to unpack both of those. Again, this comes very, very naturally to me. So I've never really thought, like I haven't deeply thought about it, but I guess, I guess there would be some nice sort of tools that we could share that, that, that could help people out there. And again, also, I'd like to ask your, your perspective on these sort of things as well. Hmm. Look, I think the hospitality industry, um, and for the people that don't know, I had uh, half a dozen Italian restaurants from when I was 23 years old to when I was 30. And they were very, very popular, big and busy restaurants um, in that era, in the early 2000s, we just were just banging them out. I mean, we had queues all the time. And it was weird because I took it so for granted, you know, I just thought that hmm. was it, you know, that was the kind of the rest that we were that, that's people just came you know but when i think about it and reflect on it i think that it's a yes and scenario i think i am initially very good at it anyway of making people feel comfortable and engaging with them immediately but i think you're also forced into it in a restaurant scenario because in a restaurant scenario you realize that you have every aspect of business happening under one roof and what i mean by that is you have procurement storage, manufacturing, uh, selling, uh, cleaning, and admin. And if you think about it, some businesses are just manufacturing businesses, right? And other businesses are distribution businesses, right? So here, what you have is you have the whole shebang of every type of business under one roof. So not only did the relationships have to be strong with my staff, which were sometimes over 100 people between the restaurants, mm. but there was also a continuous stream of customers that were coming in. And that was the whole point of it is to have many customers. And then you had suppliers and you had landlords and you had franchisors and franchise. And you just had a whole range of different relationships that you had to manage and juggle. In, in having all that experience, I've got to say that I have created a life for myself right now that I don't have any of those. I didn't want any of those headaches around me. And, and I think you and I both share in that is like we both built businesses that have got very little juggling of relationships, you know, and I think the simplicity of it is very really much, much more in line with where I am right now. So I think in the inside the restaurant, you were forced to create those relationships and you had to understand how you could lead your staff while being entertaining to your, to your uh, customers. And, you know, there's two types of restauranteurs. There's the bully restauranteur and the servant restauranteur. And, you know, we, we, we often go into a restaurant and the manager or the owner just can't do enough to please you. Are you okay? Can I get you anything else? I'm so sorry that's late. Let me comp your desserts. Let me, and can I be honest with you? I hate that sort of service. I mm. detest that service because it's coming from a place of fear, a place of walking on eggshells, from a place of just not one of love and, love and care. It's much more about fear. It's quite a selfish way of, of, of service, to be honest, because indirectly they are making themselves the reason for that service and not you. They think it's you, but it's actually themselves. The other way of restauranteering for me was my way, and I've seen other people operate like this, is when people come into your space, they must relax and realize you boss. And in that space, in that state, they really relax. Mm. They really, really relax because they know somebody's taking care of them, even though that person is toying with them a little bit. They actually enjoy it. And I often used to even say, without thinking about it, and when I was running the queues at my restaurants, I would say, 
Two more victims? Yes, come this way, please. I would call them victims. Like, <laughs> I, I, I was playing around with them. I didn't even realize what I was actually doing. But I remember my first restaurant was in Constantia. And there I had the pick and pay family, um, the Ackermans. I had Michael Mole, uh, Michael uh, Marks from the Truett family. I had, I mean, I had some serious, I had a Princess Di's brother used to come there. Like all the hobnobs of Constantia used to come there. And I was a 24-year-old pipsqueak man running around, but I was still the boss in that space. And I think I still have those friends. And they still, whenever I still see them, they still talk about that restaurant that was 20 years ago. And it was just this inherent idea that, look, I know what I'm doing. Sit down, relax. Let me take care of you. And I think what happens when I'm engaging with people today, whether it's in a small conversation or not, I think there's a level of warmness that arrives at that person that says, look, we're equal. We're always equal, no matter who I'm speaking to. And I often speak to the, I'm very good friends with all the AV guys and all the events we do. Whenever I arrive at these AV events, I know all the AV guys. And yesterday I was making friends with the ushers at the, at the, the expo, plus the minister. So I think there's this, there's this, I don't know why I have it, but it's this, we all equal, we're all in this together. I call nobody sir, I call everybody brother. Besides the prince I met on Instagram the other day, I called him your excellency. That's another story. That's a, that's a brilliant story with Dubai. You know, I started following this prince and next thing he follows me back. So I message him. I'm like, your excellency is like, hi. <laughs> so here there's some protocol. I can't exactly tell a prince, hey, brother, what's up? Um, so I think there's, there's this, this idea that we're all equal and that makes everybody quite relaxed, but also that I'm very confident in who I am and what I'm about. And I'm also not trying to bully you or trying to, prove you wrong in any way and instill my ideation onto you. And I often find myself when I'm in discussions, I am always willing to be adaptable. And so when somebody says to me there's something I disagree, I'm like, that's really interesting. Explain to me why you think like that, because I'm always open to learning something new. And I think that's a huge, huge thing that people mistake or want to arrive at a conversation and make things right. I am arriving at a conversation saying, this is my thoughts, please tell me yours and just explain to me why. Because, I mean, I had a friend many years ago, a colored gentleman who had hated the spring box. And it, it, I didn't understand it. And I asked him quite open, like I was like, explain it to me. And he explained what had happened with his dad and how white policemen had broken into his house and beaten up his dad in front of him. And it made me feel so empathetic towards him. I really understood because I thought to myself, what if somebody had broken, not broken in, what if the police had come into my house and beaten my parents up in front of me? Like, what, where would I be? Like, I can't stand here and go, you, well, if you're South African, you should love the spring box. No, you shouldn't. No, nothing. No, shooting nothing. So that was a big learning process for me where we project onto other people what we believe a scenario should be or what loyalty means or it doesn't mean or whatever the case may be. So I think it's really important to come at every conversation that you're there to be adaptable and learning, to come into every relationship where you are looking at that person as an equal, not putting them above you or below you. And I think that's really important. And also coming in with the space where you are the one leading the warmth and the tone of the conversation. And I think I do that without even realizing. I'm coming in having a warm conversation. I'm coming in not judging you. And I'm coming in as an equal. And that in a state makes everybody feel relaxed, no matter who they are and, and what scenario in society they carry. And uh, I have never thought about any of these three things. Just your questioning has got me to think about them. I'm here unpacking them for you. So thank you for that. That's yeah, a good question. And, and I, think, um, I think you nailed it. And I think it, you did it in a way that... Um, that isn't obvious, you know. I think when we when we, people go like and speak about networking and building relationships, it's often um, quite cliche in how they how they'll approach it. And I think the uh, the warmth and approaching with equality, uh, like I see those things when you when you interact with people. Um, so yeah, it's, it's good to put words to it. Um, what I'm wondering is when you like move into a city like Dubai now, for example. Um, so you have the skill set of building relationships, but 
what does that process then look like for you? Like, are you, so like you, you mesh this print, so you like, you slid into his DMs, obviously. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> Sounds so dodgy. Uh, I wish I was a princess. That would sound cooler. I, I, I wanted the DMs on a prince. Nah, 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 nah. It's not my mind, not my mind. But yeah. yeah. So, um, so, so when you go about like building the relationships, mm. do you strategically reach out to people and say, hey, let's go for a coffee? Or are those things that just organically happen to you over time? Like, how do you, how do you think uh, about building a network in a new place where you don't have a network, for example? Yeah, I think, okay, there's two things here is I'm very lucky to come with a level of gravitas. You know, I've, I, I'm linked to singularity. I have four, four best-selling books. I'm, I'm coming with something, right? Mm. And, if, and if somebody doesn't know me, my number one scenario in every relationship that I set up with is to ask as many questions as possible and to be truly fascinated with the answers, truly fascinated, because I am truly fascinated with psychology and human beings and what makes them tick and what's their motivating factors. And I guess it's because I've done so much work on myself that I understand my own motivating factors. So I'm looking for, I guess, scenarios in their world to make, understand what makes them tick. And so the first thing is ask as many questions as you can. And the second thing for me is be accepting of their answers. Be accepting of, be a, 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 you know, I watched this TED talk where this scientist brought improv into the science experiments. And he said that the biggest problem with scientists is that whenever somebody tries to say something, another scientist shuts them down. And in his labs, no scientist allowed to do that. The scientist has to go, yes, and not no buts. And it's an improv process. An improv process says, I don't break you down. I build on what you've said. And I think that also helps me is that besides asking questions, and look, I have been to three Nancy Klein thinking environment courses, same course I did three times, to teach me how to ask questions and to make sure that I'm receiving the answers in a way that is a yes and approach. And so when you are doing that, that's, that's, the, that's the fresh off the boat scenario when you haven't never met somebody and they don't know who you are and you don't know who they are. But once somebody knows who I am or what I've done and, and I come with a certain level of gravitas, the whole dynamic changes because I didn't come in arrogance. I didn't come in knowing it all. I didn't come in trying everybody to listen to me, listen to me. I've actually come in quite genuinely fascinated in what's going on for them. And then so when they do engage with me after they've engaged with me on social media, then they realize, okay, geez, I didn't realize this guy was like this. And so I think that adds to it. And a long time ago, I used to think the biggest idiots in the world, sorry to do this, Eric, I know this is going to upset you a little bit, but the biggest idiots in the world for me were the guys who threw their Porsche keys on a restaurant table when they arrived. Please don't be like that, Eric. Please don't be. I know you got a push, but please don't. Let me, let me just remove my keys off the table. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> take them, take them off the screen. I can see them in the background. You have to have them in the background of the Zoom call. Um, and you know what? I, I had a friend, Carlos, when I was younger, and his father was very rich, and nobody knew. And I loved that about him. He was so not a show off. And then you would you would fall in love. With Carlos was a wonderful man, and 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 you would fall in love with him because he was just so friendly and such a cool guy. And then all of a sudden, you realize you drive a Ferrari, and you're like, "What?" And that's the scenario here: is that when we are networking, is you don't need to shout out. Be interested. Be fascinated. Genuinely interested and fascinated, and ask questions, and then add value and be a yes and, not a no but. And in that process. You build connections and people feel heard by you. You hold space for them. You know, you do this very well as well, you know? And even the things that I don't agree with you, you know, I never rebuttal you. I'm like, okay, yeah, okay, good, Eric. That's, that's your, that maybe that's your perspective and that's awesome. And maybe some, I'll take some of it. And I also realize that everything I do is not the right way. I'm continuously learning. And then when they realize I've got four best-selling books and I'm part of it, it clicks just like a Ferrari or Porsche would in, a, in another sort of scenario in another world. So I think it's about being genuinely engaged with being a student uh, continuously. And I think that's what it is when you're coming to, to engage with people. Um, and when your network then starts expanding, what percentage would you say is people organically connecting to you versus you asking for introductions or you asking people to meet up for coffee? Well, I think in a new city, it's 90-10 because nobody knows you. Mm. So it's 90-10. I'm reaching out. 
So mm. I'm constantly reaching out. I'm going out all the time here in Dubai because I'm meeting people, I'm getting to know people, I'm engaging on that front. And, and that's, then, that's all you sliding into DMs? No. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not always sliding into DMs. Look, only for royalty. Only for only royalty for do royalty. I slide into DMs, okay? <laughs> not for the man on the street, cis man, peasants. No, no, I'm kidding. Um, um Kidding, not kidding, kidding, not kidding. So um, uh, I guess it's just a matter of, I, I speak to certain people, like the people I do know, I'm always asking them whether there's anything cool happening or there's an event happening that I can go with them and just listen, you know what I mean? And just be in the background just to get my momentum going in this region. But Dubai is a small place, you know, and uh, I imagine over the next year or so, I would really have, have an established a network in the space. Um, but initially, yes, it's me reaching out. You know, I was with a friend Creighton the other day in his house and he said something really wonderful there. He said, everybody is one conversation away from having their lives changed. And I yeah, thought that was so such true. a powerful, mm. powerful scenario. And I also then thought about how many conversations I could have had that I didn't. And he said another thing, and he's a very good conversationalist. And he said, he said, whenever I see somebody and I'm about to have a conversation with them, I am 100% wrong about who I think they are. 100%. Because mm. I always think they're like that. And then I get there and I chat to them and I have instigated the conversation and I realize how wrong I was. I totally mm. misjudged them. And I think a lot of people that see you and I or, or maybe see us in the public eye have a perspective of us, but they've never spoken to us mm. ever. And, you know, as much as it hurts us when somebody calls us a negative term and they've never actually spoken to us, I then have to realize, how am I doing this to other people? And, you know, I've told you in private the recent sort of scenarios that I've had with people that I used to judge that I don't judge anymore that I've become friends with. And I realized that was my own judgment this whole time. And I think another person that we judge continuously is Kim Kardashian. I mean, what? why? I think it's just... It's, it's, it's fun and socially acceptable to diss Kim Kardashian and, and uh, Justin Bieber. And I'm so anti that because you've never spoken to them. You don't know them. How, like, what would you think when somebody does that to you, you know? Mm. So we did start off this conversation with you not judging yourself. And it comes down to this again, you know? It's like, how are you arriving emotionally into that perspective? Emotionally, because I think that dialogue within your head determines how you show up. And so... I don't trust Asian men. And then you arrive at any scenario with Asian men, you're like, ah, I told you, I told you I didn't trust them. But that's you, that you didn't come over that. So I think, I think it's really important to, to, to have that dialogue, that internal dialogue, to be one of warmth and kindness and, and, and student wise, you know? And I don't get this right all the time, but it's definitely getting easier and better for me as I'm getting older, the more work I do on myself, the more family constellation and ayahuasca I do, the more I release of these patternings and the more I arrive at situations really ready to learn and ready to engage and really to add value, you know? And also do it patiently, not do it forcefully. I think that's also um, important. I want to share quick, three quick things. Um, I remember the very first time we, we met, and uh, we were at Jackson's and I remember like the barrage of questions. And, and mm. I'm also, I'm, I'm very similar in that way that I also want yeah. to ask a lot of questions. So it was like, yeah. it was quite like, okay, okay. You stop with your questions for a bit. My turn to ask a few questions. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then, okay, okay. Like my turn to ask questions. Yeah, I remember that yeah, very well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's definitely true about you. And, and I do mm. remember coming away from that um, yeah, I guess warmth is the best word actually to describe it. Um, wow, thank you. Yeah. Feeling... Do you know what I remember from that? I remember something different from that conversation. I felt You remember bad how amazingly leaving... dressed I was? I can't remember what you were wearing. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea what you were wearing. Um, uh, but thank you for getting dressed up, Eric. I appreciate it. Um, no, I, I remember telling you that you don't need to dominate anybody. You can mm. collaborate with them. And when I left there, I thought I was too harsh on that. I thought I could have been more patient with coming across with that. Because you were like, I want to dominate this. I'm like, dude, do you need to dominate anything, bro? Just why do you want to dominate? It's like partner, like collaborate, collaborate, you know. But I remember that. I, I remember that. I, I wasn't offended, by the way. I, I like being challenged. So that was good for okay. me. Um, Great. Secondly, on the judgment thing again, I don't know if this happens to you, but like, um, when I'm rehearsing for a keynote or I'm planning for a keynote, I very often have this idea in my head of like on stage, what it's going to look like, what it's going to feel like. 
And then I get to the venue and it's totally different from what I imagined it would be. <laughs> and and like for a second, it kind of throws me because mm. you, you've planned this thing. You saw this thing in your head, but what you were expecting is vastly different. Like, you know, I did a, a virtual or hybrid talk recently and in my head, I was like, okay, cameras, like, you know, TV monitors everywhere, people in the audience. And I arrived and was like, in this like small studio. I was yeah. like, okay, okay, take a moment, recalibrate. But like, I, I've never, ever arrived at an event. And what I saw at the event was exactly what I was expecting. It's never happened to me. I, I have a different approach. I, I want to emotionally leave that event with a state of mind. So I don't so much picture it. I, I, I try and feel the emotion I want to have when I leave. And I still don't get that right, right? So I'm always wanting to have connected with the audience, have been appreciated by the audience, helped move somebody's perspective, and ultimately just be appreciated, you know? And, you know, sometimes it doesn't always happen, unfortunately. Sometimes the audience and you miss each other, you know? So, but cool. Okay. Third thing. My last thing is um, mm. about this idea of like one conversation to change your life. Mm. I, I do think, you know, we are obviously living in a, in a smaller and smaller world because of the internet. And I think that the yeah. more of a effort you make, the more you realize that, oh, like to get to the next connection isn't actually that far away. You very recently kind of bumped into one of uh, Mr. Beast's like friends, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. so in that moment, immediately yeah. you were one connection removed from, from Mr. Mr. Beast. Beast. <laughs> like the yeah, biggest amazing, YouTuber yeah. in the world, right? <laughs> yeah. And like, and how often does that happen where like you you speak to this one person and they are connected to someone who you would have never thought that you could yeah. even like find a path to? Yeah. But then it's like it's that one conversation that then yeah. sets you up to that. But then so when you get onto a, onto a plane, right? Like, like, do you have yeah. an impulse to speak to the person next to you? Like, is it at that level for you where you're like, you know, you never know who this person on the plane is that could change my life and you're going to speak to them. Are you that kind of person? No. Well, no now, um, because I, I had that scenario of not speaking to somebody on the plane before Creighton told me that one conversation scenario. I always find the plane a, a, a weird place because you're quite in an, in, like you're in an elevator together and you don't know each other. And now you must be with each other for 12 hours, whatever it is, six hours. I always find that a little bit, like I always greet, I always greet, always greet. Even when I get in an elevator, you know, I greet. Um, but I don't know about taking that relationship one step further. Maybe because I like the plane to switch off I switch off mm. in a plane, you know, I'm, I'm meditating or I'm listening to a podcast. And so maybe I find it as a cocoon space, not a networking space. And um, like at a gym, it's not a networking space for me. It's a workout place. So I don't really go there. So maybe I've just boxed it like that. Do you speak to people on the plane? I doubt you do. Not the person I, Yeah, I, I definitely don't. Definitely you definitely don't. don't. I, I no, barely speak cool, to my bro. wife on the plane. So, no, you're too cool. You're too yeah, cool. Yeah. You're too cool. No, no, no. I know you. I know you. With your Portuguese sticking out your pocket. <laughs> <there>. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I need uh, a tag. I need a tag. You, you no, can please, see it. please. It's very subtle. No, it's extremely no, no, subtle. No, 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 it's extremely no, no, subtle. No. Look, 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 Eric. <laughs> How's this? You go into a restaurant, you tip the waiter 20%. You've just made everybody so happy. People are like, that guy is so cool. And then you drive past in the Porsche and they're like, oh my God. Now, if you arrived and put your Porsche keys on the table, and then and I'm like, <laughs> Like I used to see it at my restaurants. So I'd be like, this is such a tool bag. Why are you doing that? Like, back it away. It's like people, I saw a guy, I saw a guy. He's a, he's a, he's a big shot in South Africa. And um, he's well-known, you know, I'm not going to say his name. He's well-known, but he always, always has to park his latest sports car in front of the restaurant that he's going to, in front of the <laughs> nightclub. I'm like, how sad is your life that you have to have that you know, like it's like me walking around with all four of my bestsellers on my chest everywhere I go. I'm like, dude, pack it away. Who cares, man? Get on with your life already. Like, so yeah, 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 yeah. Judging, but you see, he also he he has a problem with judging himself without that car, right? So yeah, he's still in. I think we should do an episode process. about that as well. Um, okay. okay. I think just to kind of bring it home for us, if mm. if you had to just say to people like, okay very briefly 
two minutes. Like, what are the three things that they should think about right now as they leave this episode to become better at building relationships? How do you summarize that for them? Start asking questions. Stop telling people about your life. Ask questions. You know, you listen to a conversation and everybody's talking about themselves. Six people around the table. I did this and then I did that and then I did this. And then when I was in Croatia, no, no, when I was in Greece, no, when I was, it's like, dude, do you not realize nobody's asking questions yet? It's like, oh, it's, it's cringe. Mm. So the first thing is ask questions. Uh, the second thing is treat everybody as an equal. Everybody's an equal. Arrive as an equal and leave as an equal. You're always an equal. There's nothing else about that. Being a victim is actually a very, very selfish process to do. Being superior is a very, very selfish. There's a great TED talk said, don't look at the world through superiority or inferiority, but look at the world through interiority. And I love that term, interiority. Everybody from the God to the boss, except royalty, you have to call them your excellency. Everybody else is an equal. And the third thing for me is go slow with trying to get your message across. Go slow with trying to prove other people wrong and get them to think like you. Mm. Be adaptable, man. Be a student, man. Ask questions. Like just engage in a warm manner and let people mm. figure you out through the, you know, I often go, I go out and I, look, let's, let, let me close with this. Boundaries of who's acceptable and who's not acceptable. Who sets the tone for that relationship and who doesn't? And for me, the boundary always gets shut down when somebody is not self-aware after a while. You know, I put up with a lack of self-awareness for a period of time. And then eventually I'm like, this person just doesn't even realize that they're not aware at all in any way. And I've given them months, if not years, to try and engage with me and be interested in my life and be interested mm -hmm. just to ask a few questions. And over the last sort of two years, I've cut out three very close people to me. And it's always been on the same scenario. And in fact, I didn't even know that it was the same scenario because when I first kicked the first guy out of my life, it was because it was all about him. The second guy was all about him. And the third guy was all about him. And I was like, eventually I realized there's a pattern here that mm. the lack of self-awareness that it's always about you continuously. It's like, where do you get off not being conscious enough to engage as an equal? rather than being such a selfish process. And so it's also important to have boundaries like that, you know, and, and often we'll have friends that only want to talk about themselves. And then when you mm. do ask them to talk about you, the friendship dissolves and it's not their fault, it's your fault. And so for me, it's like, okay, this is my reality that I want to be spending time in. It's my boundaries that I want to be having. And so it's very clear about who I want to engage with and who I don't want to engage with. Do you care for me like I care for you genuinely? Then yes, then we're in the circle together. If not, then no problem. You're just not going to be in my circle. Mm. Yeah, listen, I think that's a great way to end it. Um, thank you very much. And uh, look, um, thank think, you. Mm. Yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. I think, yeah, you're going you're gonna to wrap us up. Yeah, I am going to wrap it up. And I just wanted to say thank you. You know, this episode, none of our episodes are rehearsed, but I have never been asked these questions before ever in my life. And I think this is what makes you such a fantastic coach, you know, the power of your questions and also the, the, the power of your um, perspective of, of this. And again, like I said, when you said this to me on, on, over the weekend, I was a bit surprised. I was like, what do you mean? Like, I, 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 but this has really actually helped me, you know, it's, it's given me some language to my personality and my characteristics that mm. I really appreciate it. So I hope everybody out there has enjoyed this episode as much as we have. Thanks for sharing your time and your attention with us. We hope this episode leaves you inspired and ready to action this week. Remember that you can book Eric and I to speak at your event. We also do combined learning experiences for teams. To get in touch or find out more, visit our website, theexpansive.com. Also, depending on which social platform you use, we'd love to connect with you on Instagram, LinkedIn, and Facebook. You can follow myself and Eric as well as the Expansive Business Podcast, where we share news, updates, and highlights. Until next week, keep learning, keep growing, and inspiring others to be better. Ciao.